قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You are fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. Don't fear anybody else, illa Allah, except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity, but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard Alhamdulillah Alladhi anzal ala abadihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja Alhamdulillahi fatiri al-samawati wa al-ard جَاعِلِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُلًا أُولِي أَجْنِحَةٍ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعَ يَزِيدُ فِي الْخَلْقِ مَا يَشَاءُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وقائدنا ومرشدنا وحجتنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وطاعته وأحثكم على التمسك بهدي قرآنه وسنة نبيه فقد قال الله جل من قائل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we thank him and we ask him for help and guidance he who is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be taken astray by anyone. And he who is allowed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be misguided cannot and will not be brought back to guidance by anyone on the face of this earth. I bear witness that there is no deity to be worshipped but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his last messenger sent as a true guidance to humankind so that we could follow his example at all times, all places, and under all circumstances. My dear brothers and sisters, Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi reported a hadith through the authority of Sufyan Ibn Ubaidillah Al-Thaqafi. Sufyan ibn Ubaidillah al-Thaqafi said, I saw and heard a man come to the Messenger of Allah 
and ask him a question. This man said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qulli fil islam qawlan la as'alu anhu ahadan ba'dak. In some accounts, ghayrak. This man came to the Messenger of Allah and asked him a question. He said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me something in Islam, about Islam, from Islam, that I will not need to go to anyone other than you for explanation. I just want to hear it directly from you. Please tell me something. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was given the ability of what is known as Jawami' al-Kalim, that he had the ability to say volumes in a few words. And indeed, that thing that the man asked, he said, I don't need, I don't want to ask anyone but you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said four words. Actually, one of them is an article. It's, it's, it's not even a noun or a verb. He said, Qul, say, Amantu billah, thumma staqim. Four words. Amantu billah, thumma staqim. Say, O oh man, who asked me the question, I declare my faith in Allah, then live in a straightforward fashion. I know in English it's more than four words because we are explaining what Rasulullah said. Said, O oh man, declare your faith in Allah, then live your life in a straightforward fashion. Meaning translate your faith into a straightforward application of that faith. Don't say something and do something else. Istiqama is extremely important. Living our lives according to our faith in a straightforward fashion is extremely serious and important. Actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time, his companions used to love him so much. And by the way, they counted, they, 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 they were so much uh, uh, attached to their teacher, messenger, beloved brother, everything. So he was sitting and his companions were around him and they started to count his white hairs. They counted seven white hairs. And actually this is what is reported in the books of Seerah that Rasulullah in his life had seven white hairs. So they asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why are you having white hairs? He looked at them and he said, Shayyabatni. He said, Surah Hud, Surah Hud, which is Surah number 11 in the Quran, and its sisters turned my hair white. Now, the other sisters of Surah Hud, like Surah Al Nazi'at, Al Mursalat, Surah Al Taqweer, Surah Al Infitar, those surahs that are in the 29th and 30th juz or sifara of the Quran that talk about the Day of Judgment, we understand because they describe the events of the Day of Judgment. And he said, They turned my hair white. But why, Ya Rasulullah, Surah Hud? What's in Surah Hud? They couldn't find anything in their memory of Surah Hud that may scare anybody. So they asked him, what is it in Surah Hud that turned your hair white? So he read to them, ayah number 121, which actually when you will hear it, you will say, what's so special about this ayah? other than all the ayat of the Qur'an are special, but when you know that it turned the hair of Rasulullah white, you will ask why? And it says, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ فَاسْتَقِمْ إِسْتِقَامَةً فَاسْتَقِمْ يَا مُحَمَّدْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكْ وَلَا تَطْغَوْ 
إنه بما تعملون بصير Be straightforward Live your life in a straightforward fashion يا محمد You and those who repented to Allah with you and do not trespass your limits Allahu Akbar Allah is addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and telling him to live his life in a straightforward fashion. You and the ones who repented with you and do not trespass your limits because Allah is all knowing of all the details of your lives, everything that you do. Everything that you do. In Surah An-Nisa, we are told about certain kinds of people, يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ There are people who go and hide from people. They are afraid that people will see them doing the haram they are doing, but they do not think the same way about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows everything they are doing when they are plotting in bad fashion, when they are saying things that do not please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not really put the effort to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing everything that they are doing. We have to live our life in a straightforward fashion, my dear brothers and listening sisters. How many times every day at least, minimum, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us on the straight path. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Ya Allah, at least 17 times every day when we read the Fatiha and we say, Ya Allah, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us on the straight path. The path that is straight to Jannah, insha'Allah. The path that is the shortest distance between us and Jannah. We know in mathematics that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If you go in a broken line, that is longer than a straight line. And that is why when we want to get to Jannah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us to Jannah in a straight line. And that is why we say, Ya Allah, we, you know, the whole Fatiha, if you analyze the whole Fatiha, it is about Ihdin as sirat al-Mustaqeem. It is about asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us on the straight path. This is the whole Fatiha. Because we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm ad-deen. Iyaka na'budu. Wa iyaka nasta'een. Now we are seeking your help. Help about what? Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Now we qualify what sirat mustaqeem we are asking about. Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa la-dhalleen. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Fatiha, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Don't let our life be something and our iman. We say we are mu'min, we are believers, we have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, how are you living according to your faith? Is your faith in accordance with your amal? and your amal in accordance with your faith, do you do that which is in your heart? Al-Hasan al-Basri, one of the great Muslim scholars, he said, Al-Iman ma waqara fi al-qalb wa saddaqahu al-amal. Beautiful words. He said, Iman, faith is that which is inside your heart, but is translated into action is translated into action. And that is why in Surah Ibrahim, there is a beautiful parable. A beautiful parable. ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء. تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون ومثل كلمة خبيثة كشجرة خبيثة اجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء 
Sadaqallahu al-Azim. Listen to this. You know, I'm sure that living in Trinidad, you are so close to the environment around you, the beautiful orchards and trees and, and people always planting and, and, and getting the fruits of their lands and things. You know, and you know that in order for a tree to be healthy, the root system has to be very healthy. If the root system is not healthy, the tree will be weak and will look shabby and it will be drooping and the fruits will not be as big as a tree that has a strong root system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ibrahim, and the explanation of those ayat, which is the parable, were made by none other than Ibn Abbas. You know Ibn Abbas, you know that hadith of that young man who rode behind Rasul. Imagine, imagine what, what a feeling. You know, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Rasulullah was very young. So he rode behind Rasulullah one time and, and hugged him. And then Rasulullah never, never lost a minute without being a teacher. And then he told them, Ya Ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. Oh, young man, listen to me. Even though you are behind me, I'm going to teach you some words. Ihfaz illaha yahfaz. Always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will remember you all the time. Back to Surah Ibrahim. Back Ibn Abbas, this Ibn Abbas, who was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa all the time. He said, Wallahi, 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 I know what the kalima tayyiba is. They asked him, what is it? He said, it's none other than the kalima of la ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. This is the kalima tayyiba. And the example of this kalima tayyiba, which embodies our faith, when we are faithful, when we believe in the deen al-Islam, in Allah, and in the message that was sent on Muhammad Rasulullah, in the Quran and in the Sunnah, when we declare that faith, we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the example of this kalima tayyibah is like a wholesome tree. Asluha Thabit, it has deeply rooted system. The roots are deep into the ground. As a result, because the roots are so deep into the ground, the branches reach to the sky. And it gives fruits all the time with the permission of its creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this. If the root system is deep, the root system is our Iman, our La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. The deeper we go into the ground, the deeper and stronger our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that Iman goes deep, then our Amal is Salih is in the form of the branches and the fruits. See the connection? See the connection between our Iman and our amal is salih. The deeper your iman is, the more a'mal, the more amal salih there will be, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in many places. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا Now, in many places, آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا good deeds as a result of their iman. Now, now, Look at the other side of the equation. وَمَثَلُ كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ Look at this. كَشَجَرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ اجْدُثَّتْ مِنْ فَوْقَ الْأَرْضِ Now consider a tree that you come very smoothly with a saw and you cut it so that nobody can see the cut. And then you support it so that it doesn't fall. Now the root system is separate from the rest of the tree. The sap is not passing onto the branches. What will happen after a few days? After a few hours of hot weather, what will happen? The hot weather being the challenges of life that keep coming upon us. When this hot weather comes, the hotter the weather, the more the challenges, the faster 
the branches of this tree will droop and will dry and will die and people will wonder why then you uncover the secret and you'll say this is why because it is cut even though it looks as if it is connected to the earth but it is not because the sap is not going to the amal salih because the iman is not reaching to the amal salih so this amal salih is going to droop and nobody is going to touch it the same as some people say i am a good muslim i don't have to pray i don't have to fast i don't have to give zakat i don't have to do this i don't have to we say and he says or she says that i'm a good person i always do when challenges come upon this person because there's no connection there's no salat there's no zakat what will happen what will happen that amal that he or she claimed is good amal is going to disappear with the first challenge with the first challenge because that challenge will say that your amal is for your own satisfaction not for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is why we need to translate our iman into straightforward life we have to be muslims not only by saying la ilaha illallah but by knowing the meaning of la ilaha illallah and living according to la ilaha illallah in surah muhammad or surah al-qital what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says to him fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah fa'lam he said ya muhammad you should know you should know and understand the meaning of la ilaha illallah he did not say to him faqul la ilaha illallah he did not say say it only say it he said to him you should know and by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam knowing all knowing everything he transmitted that knowledge to us he transmitted that knowledge of la ilaha illallah the most important thing it's not only a lip service and that is why my dear brothers my listening sisters you know that is why some people ask the question sometimes why is it why is it and they ask you know some of them innocently some of them you know in a cunning fashion they want to just to try to stir you know the, the 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 dust or whatever they they want to do they say now didn't allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that in mecca there will not be enough muslims why didn't he command his messenger to do hijrah and migrate from mecca to medina much earlier than 13 years because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived his message 13 years in mecca and 10 in medina before he died why not earlier than that why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give immediate command ya muhammad migrate to medina and in medina islam will flourish and there will be so many muslims why 13 years in mecca if we and, and 13 years in mecca less than 100 muslims less than 113 years 13 years of the message less than 100 muslims if we will go and analyze and study the 13 years were the most important years of the message of Islam because the 13 years were spent in teaching 100 Muslim leaders by their supreme leader by their teacher by their mentor the final messenger to humankind Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he spent those 13 years teaching the likes of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and Az Zubair ibn al Awam and the others the true meaning of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah when they understood it when they absorbed that meaning when they lived according to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah they were ready to take the message of Islam to the whole world because now the foundation is la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and then they were ready to start receiving the rest of the pillars of islam salat and zakat and siyam and hajj because in mecca there was no zakat there was no siyam there was no hajj 
late in Mecca there was Salat after Isra and Mu'raj but when they had the strong foundation of La ilaha illallah go to the rest of the world and teach them the true Islam and when we stand for our Salat we stand with La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah when we fast we fast in the name of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah when we give zakat we give it in the name of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah when we do tawaf and sa'i and go to Arafat we do it in the name of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha al-azim li wa lakum fa ya fawza al-mustaghfirin make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will accept our dua. Amin, Ya Rabb. Alhamdulillah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. My dear brothers, my listening sisters, this is very important. Istiqama. Istiqama. Inna alladhina qalu rabbuna allahu thumma istiqamu. ثم استقاموا قالوا ربنا الله إيمان ثم استقاموا عمل الصالح تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون Nuzulam min ghafoor al-raheem. This is, this is something that we have to cherish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that those who declare their faith and they live according to that faith in a straightforward fashion. You know, Ramadan should not stop in its legacy. You know, Ramadan two and a half weeks ago was over now are we going to be people of Ramadan or people of Islam you know Al Mu'alla Ibn Al-Fadl one of the great Tabi'een said something about the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said they used to live in the shadow of Ramadan for six months and wait for the next Ramadan for five months which means that Ramadan was a center point because they had to live the entire Islam during Ramadan imagine in Ramadan you give zakat you have extra salat you are fasting and some are fortunate to go and do Umrah and be next to the Kaaba imagine and with all of that it's wrapped in a gift package called la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah imagine that you live every day of your life with the spirit of ramadan imagine that you do not become a seasonal muslim you do not become a person who hops between occasions and then when there is no occasion you live coat and coat life as you what is life as usual as muslims as believers we have to live every second even as rasulullah he said even while you are asleep if you are in connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you move you will do dhikr you will say la ilaha illallah you will say subhanallah try it and see there is a special dua if you have difficulty waking up for fajr you don't really need yes there is the luxury of wake up call at hotels and there is uh, you know uh, uh, alarm clock and th but there is a dua if you make that dua allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send malaika angels to wake you up for your fajr salat for your ibadah that is if you are with allah and translating your iman into action you know salat is not meant to be a set of movements only salat as we read in surat al-ankabut tanha al al fahshai wal munkar wala dhikrullahi akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un 
Allah subhanahu is telling us that salat should stop you from abominations, from wickedness, from cheating, from living your life away from is this is what salat is all about. If if your salat is not stopping you from that, there's something wrong. Revisit your salat. Zakat is to purify that inner self and that attachment to wealth and money. This is zakat. Siyam is to teach you the true meaning of taqwa. Hajj as well to develop that taqwa once in a lifetime. If you do it, it will suffice. Let us come back. Let us come back and relive our iman and revive our spirit and be the Muslims who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam wanted us to be. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa khatayana وإسرافنا في أمرنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم علمنا من ديننا ما جهلنا وذكرنا منه ما نسينا وكن معنا ولا تكن علينا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقب الصلاة His face so beautiful bestowed with grace my heart just yearns to be